All right, guys, we're going to do a hacking video. Again, some of the new guys in the corp, there's some things that I always thought I kind of take for granted that I thought everybody knew that apparently some folks don't know. I've already hacked or scanned down the site, so that part, I didn't want to bore you, bore you with the video for that. But uh, a couple of tips. Right now, I'm in a .5 system just because I don't feel like watching DSCAN today while I uh, hack cans and do a video at the same time. Once you find your site, find your first can. Here's my suggestion, at least. You're not going to find a lot of ISK value data and relic mining or relic you know, scanning in high sec. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's there. You can you can make a little bit of ISK. Maybe you're looking for some specific materials. Yeah, you might be okay doing that. But if you want the good loot, you want to really make some ISK. And believe me, you can make some ISK doing data and relic sites. You need to be doing it in wormholes or in null sec. Uh, low sec's a little better than high sec, but null sec is a lot better. And different regions are, are there are some regions that are much much better than others. I'm not speci uh, specifying which regions. I think that's information players should research themselves, not have everything spoon fed to them. But the techniques I'm more than willing to share. What I typically do is I orbit it at 2500. The reason being is I'm in null sec or I'm in a wormhole. I want to be able to bug out quickly if somebody pops in local uh, or even on D-scan. So at 2500, I'm in a Helios. I like the Helios. It gets better uh, the bonuses to the scan, to the hacking and all. Uh, some people use a stereo. Those are fine chips too. But orbiting at 2500 enables me to cloak out immediately because I'm more than 2,000 meters from the can so if somebody pops in all I got to do is hit the cloak button and I'm immediately cloaked and I'm safe all right now let me pull up the this is a relic site let me target the can and I'm going to turn my relic module on all right yeah this is because it's high sec it's a very small board uh, when you get in the null sec the boards are much bigger but this, I think, has everything that I need to show you. One of the things that I've noticed after scanning thousands of these sites is the data core that you're looking for is never near where you start. I mean, maybe once in a blue moon. 99 times out of 100, it's at one of the further ends of the board, typically opposite. My guess, my guess right now is it's going to be up in here. Could be right here, but I'm going to guess up in here. This is probably statistically the most likely place that the game will put it now there is a feature in this that again I thought everybody knew that apparently a lot are not aware of called the rule of six anytime you have a node that has six nodes adjacent to it this one on this board this is the only one sometimes when you have the bigger boards you'll have you could go clear across a board and be in one of those this is a safe node if there are six around it it's safe when you have to get from here to here because you think the core might be over here and you have a, a whole line of these where it's uh, it's a full board basically and you've got a whole bunch of these, uh, what do you call them, safe spots, then that's the safest route to travel because you won't hit any viruses. There's one exception. If you click the safe spot and it is a virus, every time without fail, the system core will be one of the adjacent nodes every time. So I'm going to start off. I only have one direction to go here, so I'm going to start there. All right, that one, that number one, that is just like Minesweeper. It's telling me something. I am within one node of something positive or something neutral. Not a virus, positive or neutral. Doesn't mean there can't be a virus in one of those, but I'm just, it's telling me that within one of where I'm at is a tool or one of the little orbs that's neutral. Those orbs, if you click on them, can be a virus or a tool. So I typically do not click on them unless I have to. So I want to go, let's try here. Yep, there was a tool. I click another one. I'm within two. I'm within one. So one of these is a neutral or a tool. So it's going to be this one. And it's a neutral. So I'm not going to hit that yet because it could be a virus. I don't want to deal with those. And I've got a tool, and this is going to be a relatively simple board, so I should be fine. Now I'm going to go into that safe spot. In the unlikely event, and I know it's not, but in the unlikely event that's a virus, then the, the core is going to be one of these five right here. It's not a virus, but I'm within one. Okay, now I hit a virus. Here's the other thing on these viruses. 
Just because the virus is there does not mean you have to fight it. This is a normal virus, what I call a normal virus. It's just a little uh, triangle. That one, you only fight if you have to. Don't waste your coherency, your, vi your, your antivirus strength. Don't waste that. Some of the viruses have these little pointy, has three pointy things off of each side of it. I forget which what the name of it is, but you'll see it. It's got a little circle and it's like three little jagged edges to it. Those you have to fight immediately because every time you click, it'll flash, which means it gets stronger. And if you happen to have another virus on the board or multiple viruses, one of those viruses will get stronger along with it with each click. So you need to take those out immediately. But this is a regular one. We don't need to bother with it now. I'm going to work around it. If it turns out that I think the node's down here, at that, the core is in that node right there, then I will have to fight it. But right now I don't. And now i got to fight something. So I'm going to use my tool. I'm going to take this one out. This is high sec, so this is an easy board. I'm within one. So one of these two is a tool or a neutral. Or it may have been that one. And this said one, so all right. So there's something over here, probably right here. This this virus is blocking it out, but I think that right there is a tool or a neutral. I'm within three. So there's no need to even click that one. Three, two, one. So I'm still within three. It's probably over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fight this one. I said I think that might have been a tool or a neutral. Let's see. Yep, it was a tool. Yep, right there. Like I said, it was probably up here. I said possibly here. My guess was up here, but it's always on the, almost always, opposite side of the grid as where you start and as far away it is, as it can get. It's it's never close by. So I don't even bother trying to hit stuff close by to it because then I wind up popping up more viruses. Hit my tool, even though it's not going to be necessary. And system hack successful. Now right now I'm orbiting, so I click it open cargo because I'm almost to the edge where I can do it and there now during the process of scanning that and hacking that had someone had I been in null sec and someone popped in local or I pulled my D scan up I saw a threat all I had to done is I'm while I'm orbiting this thing at 2500 it's just very simple let me get back to 2,500. Again, this is 95% of you know this already, but just for those who are new, I'm orbiting this thing at 2,500 meters, and I see somebody come in. All I got to do is just hit cloak. That's it. I'll lose my lock, and if I'm in the middle of the mini game, it'll end the game, and that counts. You only get two shots at each can. After two shots, two unsuccessful attempts, the can will explode. But I'd rather the can explode than my ship explode because some cloaky Proteus came in on me and, and nailed me. So, But that's basically it. And you go through each one of these cans successfully. And NullSec is the place to be, though. You can make a lot of this. You can make 20, 30 million average per can in some areas of NullSec. Uh, and I've gotten as much as 100 to 200 million out of a can. And I wouldn't be surprised if there were some people who had gotten even more than that out of a can. Uh, Cinnabol blueprints come out of these plans, and those are money makers. Uh, very little ifs to make them, and they sell for what does a Cinnabol sell for now? About 140 million. So, data relic, same thing, it's the same exact process. Rule of six: uh, think Minesweeper. Don't fight the viruses that are the regular viruses, the triangular viruses, or even the square viruses. The one with the pointy edges, and the one with the little. Uh, it's like a doily uh, curly cues around the edges of it that and the spiky one you have to fight because it will strengthen itself every time you click without taking it out all right that should wrap that up one footnote uh, I noticed that after I got back and I had docked uh, something I should have mentioned while I was at the can uh, depending where you're scanning at and where you're trying to hack at, if it's a high-risk area and the traffic's been, you know, I'm a little bit maybe nervous as far as the traffic patterns have been. I don't know that I'm going to get all six cans completed before a threat could come through. That's why on my scanning ship, I keep a cargo scanner. You can target the ships in turn. Typically what I'll do is I'll sit back at a safe distance. I think the range on this is, uh, it says 70 kilometers. I'll sit back at a safe distance. I don't, I'm not even sure that the Helios can target that far, but I think it's about 40 kilometers. But I'll sit back and go ahead and target lock all the cans 
and then cargo scan them independent, you know, cargo scan one, then the other, then the other, and it'll show me what's inside. Because sometimes the cans, you get a can that's empty. Sometimes you get a can with some really low end salvage, a couple pieces of carbon, that kind of stuff. And if I am crunched on time, obviously I don't want an empty can, even if I have all the time in the world. And if it's just got carbon in it, I don't want that. But I can prioritize the order of my cans. I go, oh, that can's got a Cinnaball blueprint and some other blue salvage. I want that one first. And then that way I hit them in that order. And you make a note of it. If you fleet with yourself, click right click your right click and then uh, where is it form fleet with that will enable you to tag the cans and when you right click the can you'll see tag at the bottom and you can put tags on them tag one tag two tag three tag four so you know what order to hit them just in case if you have to bug out at least you didn't leave the good stuff behind uh, if you're gonna bug out early then, you know leave the crap behind and get you know maximize your risk while you're out there it's easy to make a hundred million risk an hour doing those data sites, especially if you prioritize the cans because you may not always have time. And honestly, even when I have time, if I've got a, some garbage cans, 20,000 isk worth of salvage and some carbon, I won't even go after those and take the time to, to hack those simply because that's time I could be using hacking the good cans.